YouTube looks good. Found. Yep, I can hear all of Michael's paper ruffling and shuffling about. That actually is not me. <laughs> Sorry, that's me. I'll just blame it on Michael still. So. All right, well, we are live and on the air. Uh, welcome, everyone, to the Foolish Tech Show. It is a Wednesday hump day. We're halfway there, halfway done, whichever class filledness you look at, I guess. Um, we are here mainly to provide support and answer any questions about our products and services. So if you do have any of those and you're watching, feel free to jump over to foolishtechshow.com. We have a few different ways you can join our IRC chat from there. Um, and you can speak to us directly and ask any of those questions. So if uh, you don't have any of those questions or we don't have anything about our products and support to talk about, then we're probably just gonna talk about random tech stuff or news or things that interest us and fill the dead air from there. So looks like we got Phoenix and Joe Chamberlain in the chat already, so welcome, welcome both. And Phoenix has got a couple links for us to start off the day here, so let me see what he's got going and while I do that I guess how's everybody else doing today I'm doing, doing okay. good extremely busy yeah it's busy indeed it has been um, so uh, not really interested in the financial records these CVV numbers aren't those just the numbers on the back of the thing So uh, I'll repost it here. Phoenix had posted that uh, 300,000 plus financial records, oh, with the CVV numbers stolen from Payment Gateway. So uh, I guess Yeah, that, those are the numbers on the back of the card, and those are yeah. kind of important. I, I didn't, I, I skipped the with part there. I just saw the financial record CCV number. Or CCV. I mean, that, yeah, those numbers alone wouldn't be. Yeah, but if it has the information and that, then yeah, that is pretty bad. Um, that's definitely not a good thing. Hopefully no one's using that. And this is uh, the blue snap payment. Okay. Yeah, that's, uh, that's not good. Um, if they're, how long have they been around? Um, I tend to think it's probably good to go with more veteran players than a, a new startup, uh, uh, you know, payment gateway. <laughs> Unsure. Um, he also points out Microsoft and Adobe roll out critical security updates. Definitely worth patching now. Um, I'd also notice too, I don't know if I have the link. I'll look for it when I get into my links here. But um, so apparently Microsoft has made it so that in Windows 7, uh, outdated Flash ActiveX plugins will, I believe, get automatically uninstalled. I'm not sure if they will do automatic updates for it, but I'm pretty sure it's, it blocks them if they're out of date. So it kind of forces you to go and download new ones. And I did not realize that uh, Windows 8 and 10 actually update the ActiveX plugin through Windows updates. So they kind of teamed up with Adobe and got that working. But Windows 7, one of the recent updates that they pushed out this past, past patch Tuesday, um, will actually disable your Flash ActiveX plugin. And there are a couple group policies that you can uh, get to fix that. Let me go ahead and see if I can find that article because that was interesting for some, I guess, if you're on Windows 7 and using ActiveX Flash plugins. and you need to use an outdated version for some reason. Um, um, you can still do that if you want to. You just have to fix it. So this is the link to that. I'm not sure if that's the same thing that article or that Phoenix was posting. I didn't actually read that article. Just read his little tagline there. So. Um, but you can check out that GHACS one and find out some of that other interesting information as well. Then he also posted that uh, data breach, another one again, 6.6 .6 million plain text passwords from a ad company has been exposed. So uh, 
we had talked on Monday about Hashcat and using dictionary attacks, this is exactly what that improves. So the more of those passwords that get leaked, the more likely you're one of your passwords is on a mm -hmm. uh, dictionary list and because that's where pretty much these things go, right to those dictionaries. <laughs> yeah, much, much easier to crack and attack that way, and that is why you should be using passphrases where you either use like five, at least five character words with spaces in between them, or um, use a completely random generated thing with a password manager such as KeePass. Uh, their password manager can generate all kinds of random passwords for you. So, uh, he also points out that Easy to Boot has a uh, version 1.84c now available. So I'm assuming there's some updates and changes in that, and listed on the change log there. Doctor, is that your keyboard that's so super loud? Sorry. Um. So apparently, there, he also posted there's a thing in the UK going, uh, trying to make it so that there's 10 years in prison for online pirates. I, I feel like I'm reading that right. Um, that's an interesting thing. I kind of feel like that relates back to like the, the war on drugs and why Obama is pardoning so many people now because you're muted, Michael, because the like essentially we tried that approach we tried saying all right we're just going to give mandatory uh things out michael we can't hear you proctor can you say something tank yeah testing hello so it's just you michael um yeah i can still hear it on the stream so whatever um yeah, I, I just don't think that that's the, the best tactic because, I mean, every situation is different and especially online piracy, like, that's a super hard thing to kind of pin on one person. And it's not like you're going to be able to give, uh, you're not going to be able to give, uh, like, the 10-year-old kid that's doing all the online piracy in the house 10 years in prison. So I don't know. I, I kind of feel like it's a bad way to try it. And yeah. Um, what else do he's got here? He's got a couple more. Uh, EU is proposing mandatory pr piracy filters for online services. So again, that doesn't really work. I don't feel like uh, you end up catching more legitimate things with internet filters than you do with others and you have to have a good white listing so that legitimate people can get their stuff back so who knows and doctor you gotta mute after you finish talking <laughs> um oh he posted this is an interesting one that uh windows pcs have been getting infected with a backdoor Trojan that was via Microsoft publisher files. Um, wow, that's a, it's been a long time since I've heard Microsoft publisher. Do people still use that? I guess so, if there's a Trojan that made the news. Yeah, they, they, they do. Hey, Michael, we can hear you again. Yeah, I know um, uh, certainly that uh, some businesses we work with You're really soft. Is your mic down? No, it wasn't. Um, so uh, he also pointed out that uh, there's a really great tool, and he capitalized great, so I'm going to scream it as he would if we were reading chat correctly. Here is a great tool called Ansible, and supposedly it allows you to do Linux task on many Linux servers at once without having to SSH into each. Um, it's owned by Red Hat and all the code is open source and that's probably a good thing because I feel like that might be risky providing uh, back-end SSH access to a tool for your servers. Yeah. 
Maybe I'm just more of the, the old fashioned. I'd prefer logging into the server and doing my stuff myself, not relying on a tool or something to automate that. But who knows? I could be wrong. Um, and that could be a great tool. He, he does work with uh, Linux servers a lot recently, it seems. So if he says it's great, then I wouldn't doubt him for that. Um, Michael, did you want to bring up your your GHB, was it? GHS? G something? G, G something? What? What? Oh, GCHQ. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, yeah. So, okay. Um, we had noted that um, BT... Are you going to post a link to the article you're talking about? I, 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 I will. Um, we had noted that uh, BT... Um, British Telecom, uh, one of the largest uh, ISPs in the UK, probably the largest, um, had uh, been um, their DNS servers are not um, resolving our site, and I was a little bit weirded out. We were a little bit weirded out by that. Um, we just had uh, users basically switch to Google's, and everything's been fine after that. Um, but um, I'm now seeing this article that seems to indicate that the UK. Um, um, their, you know, Sverance agency, the D GCHQ, which is very much apparently like our CIA, um, is, pl uh, is planning to implement a um, UK-wide DNS quote-unquote firewall that will block things. Um, this is very much like the pie hole works, for instance. Um, it basically flags uh, various uh, DNS uh, uh, queries as, uh, you know, ad-based or, or, or associated with ads, and it, uh, you know, kind of doesn't resolve them. Um, that's what's happening here, and it this is indicating that um, maybe what we're seeing is the result of, of of this. It sort of makes sense because BT is a huge player in um, in this whole process here. Now, um, I just want to reiterate that if anybody is using BT as their provider, um, I'm, uh, that it's very easy to switch the DNS. Um, you know. Almost all modern modems and routers can can you know make that pretty much seamless for the user. They just make one change and, and it's I've, okay. Now I've there could be our blog link to that issue and explaining the solution for it. Um, so not even close to the CIA. Okay, he's uh, the NSA. Okay, sorry, they're more like the NSA. My apologies, uh, Phoenix, if uh, if you're correct on that. Um, but. Um, their surveillance agency, and I guess that that does kind of fit with the uh, Snowden NSA stuff. So, yeah, good point. Um, I mean, apparently they've been doing this stuff all along because our, our friend Vrytek is in Great Britain, and he's mentioned several times that he already has to use VPNs and stuff to get to torrent sites and download things and things mm -hmm. of that nature. So, yeah, so they're really cracking down. But I just I mean, would—he's he's not even doing pirating things. He's yeah, legitimate. legitimate things. And obviously our services are legitimate as well, and there's no reason just because we mention the words ransomware and malware on our website does not mean that we're pushing it. Um, and so I, I, I you know, uh, at least the, like Piehole has really had really have experienced uh, that on a number of occasions. Um, but, uh, you know, it seems like it's very poorly implemented over there if it's blocking as many sites as it is to affect Brightech and, uh, and 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 uh, our users as well. Um, well. They're doing it back for that other article about the they're they're trying to fight online piracy mm -hmm. in the wrong ways. So. so they're trying to fight everything. But what this is quickly looking like is it's gonna look like uh, you know China's great firewall. I, I'm, I'm concerned about these uh, efforts. Uh, the internet is not open anymore, and uh, many many parts of the internet are being walled off by apps. That's one way they're getting walled off that aren't necessarily accessible otherwise, and um, and things like this. Um, kind of creepy, and I keep a close eye on it. I mean, I understand the need for cybersecurity. I don't understand the need to wholesale just you know without a without a proper vetting process in place. You know, blocking of well, I mean, it's easily internet. it's easily abused, and it's not like they're they're going to be very open about where they're getting their sources and what they're deciding to block and unblock and things like that. Even if they do offer the ability to contact them to get yourself whitelisted, so it it's it's a very very slippery slope to the point of like China and preventing dissidents and things like that. Um, it kind of makes me think that the uh, there was a, a 
a thing that I was talking about uh, from a RTL-SDR uh, blog post where uh, they were using this is another link regarding that satellites to uh, connect and so like apparently there's a satellite network up that you can use just the, the $20 RTL SDR dongle and an antenna crafted correctly to be able to pull down news and information without having to go through the internet. So if you are in a place like China or somewhere else that blocks it, mm -hmm. testing, you'll be able to get free access to that. Like it's very limited because you're downloading from a satellite and- The, the bandwidth is horrible, uh, but if you can't get access to it, yeah. Otherwise, I, I, I think it's a wonderful thing, and Brentley's been mentioning this, he's, uh, and I never kind of quite realized how much these simple radio broadcasts and shortwave and, 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 and um, um, what do you call it, the, um, um, with the, the call signs, the radio call sign stuff, what, what is that called? Um, uh, but those, those all things are used in you know, countries and people, you know, dissidents, uh, uh, whatnot. They're widely used, um, so this isn't something that's uh, new. This things like this have been used in the Middle East. They've been used in other areas, um, but I, I believe that it hasn't, you know, received a lot of attention, media attention at least. And I don't think people believe it to be an option. Some people just don't know, and oh, the internet's not here, so you know they think that that's it. Well, that's not the case. Um, as much as the governments would like to prevent you from getting uh, to it, they're really just blocking, you know, the traditional internet pipes, wireless technologies, radio broadcast. All of those things are still, you know, perfectly capable of crossing over international borders for the most part. Um, so uh, there's always a solution, maybe just not the speed and convenience of the internet. But if you need to get something uh, wireless, you know, and they can they can get the information to you. You know, they don't have pictures or videos, you know potentially just the maybe the AP news stories or what what have you but it's it's a it's a solution to a, a, a dire problem in, in those areas of the world so. yep and I can't seem to find that article um, that was talking about that one specifically I thought it was really cool and apparently I didn't save it but it is on one of our past shows so I will try to look for it again and see if we can find it later but anyway moving on uh, Yep, lots of stuff about the, the NSA and traffic monitoring and things like that. They they were even putting uh, splitters on the fiber optic cables so that the the image kept going fine, but it was actually mirrored to somewhere else, and they got all the information. So everything looked like it was untampered with, but they're actually just copying and decoding things all at once without anybody's knowledge. But anyway. Let's not get too much into that. Let's get into this and thank the UK for something. So apparently Swatch went out and trademarked iWatch and now Apple can't release the iWatch in the UK. So oh, without renaming it. <laughs> they're not gonna rename it though. Come on. You know they're not. And Proctor had mentioned that in the U.S., if uh, someone has a a established brand, that that trademark application and granting would not hold up. Like they could basically just say, "Hey, really? I watch iPhone, iPod, yeah. Yeah. iMac. We we, we kind of own that that branding. It won't hold up here, but it did hold hold up there apparently." So. Yeah, I, I don't know all the particulars related to that, but I do know that there are provisions to keep someone from branding something very similar to an already established brand. Yeah. Or um, trademarking. Like they, they did have to pay $60 million to secure the iPad trademark in China after a local firm had laid claim to the name and briefly had tablets uh, pulled from the shelves even. So yeah, they. It's very, it depends on the country. It looks like so. Yeah. Yeah. So they they may end up just paying Swatch to. Yeah, to let them do it. To let them have it. Um. The NSA Phoenix says the NSA has another secret hacking group called Tau that's gonna have their tools leaked. I guess. <laughs> 
I don't trust the, just like Brantley pointed out the other day, I think, um, what is our hackers are, are considered like 29th in the world. Um, so, and what is the, what is the NSA going to do? Hire the Chinese and the Russians, the number one and two spots in those, in that regard to, uh, to fill those roles. I, I think that's sort of not feasible for them to do. But. Well, I like the article that, uh, the NSA and the FBI and everybody was having trouble hiring hackers because they all do drugs. Mm. Yeah, that, I, I, I read that too. And uh, Phoenix, I, I, do, I do believe uh, they, these were the tools, that, or some of their tools were. Anyway, I don't want us to focus didn't. on that anymore. Story. It's something you can spend a whole, like if you haven't looked, you can Google all this stuff and you'll find tons of information about it. We don't need to very true, very true. rehash it here too much. Um, and we've even talked about it prior. So um, There's an interesting privacy case, but I'm hesitant to talk about it relating to cell phones. Um, um, Arizona Supreme Court found that cell phones are intrinsically private, and so therefore somebody picking it up, even if it's not locked, uh, you know, in the case of uh, you know legal proceedings and police or whatnot, um, that's going to... Uh, yeah, uh, at least in Arizona, it's uh, you're you're they're going to need to get a warrant um, to uh, or permission to look into that. Um, what I don't like about this, and the reason why I'm not going to go into any further detail on it, you guys can look it up yourself, is because of the nature of the crime associated with it, and the nature uh, and the proof that was obtained on the phone proving that this was. In can fact, I have a link to that? So that I, can... I do, but the link has the has the title of it. That okay, I guess I can just link to it. Fine. Oh yeah, one of those kind of titles. Yeah. Um, I, I, I mean, I'm all for privacy. You know, you know, guys know that out there, and I generally would, uh, you know, um, send a thank you basically to the Arizona. Well, according Court. to that like title it. you posted, you're into necromancia or necrophilia too. So. <sighs> no, nah, but. The, 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 the point is, though, that I, yeah, I... They don't I, even have to look at your phone now. They just know you posted a link. <sighs> but a procedure is very important, okay? And cops need to understand that even if the person right in front of them is, is, is absolutely guilty, they can't come to that determination without a court, you know, without the courts. So I, I, I think this is good for them to not overstep, but in this case, he was clearly guilty. <laughs> well, I hope they found other evidence to prove that. that no, well, no. Was the admissible. Was based upon that, that uh, because that was the only evidence that they had access to. So the whole case is thrown out. This guy's walking free. Mm. Basically, um, you know, to give you an idea, this woman, he might have, may have killed her, and uh, or, well, that, that's a little unclear. She dropped dead for whatever reason, and then this guy went to town. Alrighty then, moving right along. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Phoenix posted that Tor browser exposed uh, anti privacy implementation at mass scale, and it looks like it's an attack where they can uh, basically spoof a, an add ons.mozilla.org TLS certificate and uh, intercept updates to like the no script extension and other things and basically kind of rewrite the code and give you a different one so that's interesting not good for tour i i've always kind of wondered why they're basing off firefox like yeah that seems kind of weird to me but you can set up your own tour and not use, and you can use whatever browser you want. You have to do a little bit more work or uh, playing with it. But um, USB Armory that we mentioned on Monday, they actually have a pretty good walkthrough of how you can set it up to be your own tour proxy. So if you ever want to do stuff on tour, you just plug it in there and uh, set up your Windows proxy or whatever proxy to go through that USB Armory instead of through the internet directly so um ways you can get around it you don't have to use the tor browser to play with it um i thought this article was pretty interesting so uh advertisements are moving everywhere and it looks like there is a e-ink screen company that is now offering 
motion ads on the back of uh, semis. So we've all seen semis have some kind of branding labels on the cargo oh. they're carrying sometimes. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Now it looks like they're going to be rolling billboards. So yeah, that's um, yeah. This thing... that's not that's not distracting like a text message. I mean. Yeah, you know that's a very good point, Brantley. Um, I, 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 you know, you. But you could argue, I guess, um, that uh, billboards would fall into that same category. Um, I do argue that. I feel well, like it's ridiculous that they're like, even they even have billboards that say, "Don't text and drive, and call this number or text this number to find out more info." It's like I'm on the road. What? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, they, they need to be a little bit more consistent with their message and what they're dealing with. Um, it's to see the uh, the thing, there's the hospital down the road has um, a tiny, tiny little thing, and if you can, if you squint as you're speeding past in the 50 mile an hour zone, you can just barely read that it says uh, texting and driving is dangerous or, or something like that. I'm thinking. Um, how about trying to read your stupid billboard? That's what I say. I say billboards are just as dangerous. I mean, there's a hospital. They're trying to kill people with... A... Well, they have profit in mind. Listen, okay. Billboards may have been... Um, you know, the, the, profit in mind. But, the amb what? but they, they can't make that super ambulance ride if you wreck into the ambulance right in front of the hospital. I mean... <laughs> Well, I, I, I um, you know, I think it's so easy for people to, or to receive advertising these days through so many different venues or, you know, so many different um, pipes that uh, I don't know that we need billboards any longer. There might have been a time in the past where there was very little opportunities for advertising direct to consumers, and that may have um, been, you know, acceptable at, a, at an earlier point in time, but I, I don't think that argument could be used today. And, you know, Brantley, I'm kind of in agreement. I think maybe they should all be taken down. Um, when's the my last time concern. anybody that you know has actually called a number on a billboard? <laughs> well, my only concern is the world may stop turning because supposedly billboards help the world turn because they provide wind resistance and they force the earth to move. Well, I, I'm sure that local municipalities have uh, sign regulations and uh, laws concerning how many billboards can be placed in a you know particular area where they can be placed. But if you know every truck on the highway has a, a billboard on it, um, that pretty much trumps their uh, ability to to regulate how many signs are up yeah. along the highway. So, uh, interesting question on that. Um, Interstates are, are done through federal grants and the states, I know, implement and, and do them and design them and everything there. Is that actually federal land and controlled there or is that uh, state controlled? I feel like it's state controlled still. So. I believe it is Most still state it controlled. Is. Yeah. Uh, that's when I ran off the road and hit a tree, the state wanted me to pay for it. <laughs> And, and most of your billboards, if you notice, aren't on the highway area. They're usually behind a fence and on private property. So I yeah. don't know how the regulations of that would go. Like, it's not like they're selling off uh, the Space 4 billboards because they, they don't own that area. That's a private, uh, private holder, land holder that's allowing the billboard companies to build billboards in their area. Yeah, the billboards should be on, on private property, but there's sign local sign ordinance would determine how many billboards you can put in a particular sure space or on what sense. land. Yeah. Y'all have never heard that conspiracy theory that billboards are the reason why the earth turns? No. Nah. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. Kind of comical, but now that I hear it, but, um, no. And there's a lot of billboards that could theoretically be true now. <laughs> um, let's see, what do we got else here? Uh, Phoenix posted Facebook to roll out tech for combating fake stories and its trending topics. They've been saying they're going to do that and they're not going to do it very well. Twitter has also said they're going to do the same thing. So how are you going to fight fake stories with a freaking bot? That doesn't make sense. Like the bot's not going to be able to say, Oh, this is a, this is real. It's definitely real. 
Well, I, there are theories on that. Come but... on, we've already seen the issues with. Oh yeah, no, don't get me wrong. Bots and Facebook and don't how they handle wrong. the thing. So. Don't get me wrong. I'm not suggesting that, but um, uh, it's. It, it... Yeah, I. They need Their to. It all have. Cool. It needs to all have oversight. I think. Yeah, it sure is. I think. Um, you know, in other words, uh, the algorithm should maybe recommend a few things for humans to investigate, but it shouldn't automatically do the process. Um, why can't there be a slight delay? Why does it have to be immediate takedown? You know. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, also, he posted Google may have to pay for new snippets under EU copyright reform. So, there's that. And, oh, Volkswagen is founding a new cybersecurity firm to prevent car hacking. It's weird that they didn't have a cybersecurity firm when they started integrating all this cyber tech into their cars. But, you know, I guess better late than never, right? Maybe? I don't know. <laughs> what's this uh yeah oh golly so uh hey michael this might interest you um depending on how you feel about poisonous snail goo it uh <laughs> could rescue diabetes so. diabetics um let's take a look diabetes just eat the poisonous snail goo yeah I, I feel like it's something that you're going to have to, like, rub around your face or in your ear, maybe. <laughs> or, or and even if it doesn't say that, you probably should. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree with Tank on that. Probably should do that. Not, that's so wild. This fish uses insulin effectively as an attack mechanism. Um, for other fish, they secrete it into the water around them, and when the other fish swims by, their blood sugars plummet. And the weird thing about this is insulin is nowhere near that fast to operate. Um, you know, it takes almost an hour after taking insulin for its effects to even start, and roughly two hours well, it for, it snail, peak, so. for it to peak. For it to peak, and 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 two hours, um, uh, and that's on the sh short acting, and that's the ones. It's the insulins that are designed. Well, to, are you talking about human scale, or are you talking about these small fish sizes? Well, I'm I'm just talking about the the human thing. So I uh, yeah, and, I don't know how fish also are fish that, like breathe water, so they're intaking it with every breath. Well, yeah, okay, so maybe it's a quantity thing, but the the, the thing is, I can inject a, a massive amounts, um, multi cc's of, uh, which is a lot of, of 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 insulin, into me, and nothing would happen for at least an hour, no matter how much I put into me. So, uh, you know, it, it, large concentrations of this really shouldn't be, you know, small fish, large concentrations. I see where you're going. I, I think but, we can test this on the air. But um, so we're, we're going to have you do that at the beginning of the show tomorrow. Whoa, 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 um, make sure that nothing happens to you within the, the hour of the show. I, I don't. I think there's <laughs> plenty of medical evidence to to support what I'm saying. But um, <laughs> but this insulin truly could be um, game changing. Um, one of my arguments about. Um, my inability to, to tightly control my numbers is the fact that the insulin does take that long. So I get a reading that says my blood sugar is at a, uh, at a whack high, and, and I want to take some insulin to correct it. i got to bide my time, basically, until that insulin starts working. And yeah. it's uh, a lot of diabetics, too, get frustrated by that, and they ended up thinking, well, I'm going to push some more insulin into me. And they you know, then create another problem of, 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 of overdosing themselves. Um, so I feel like it's probably going to be like the the tequila and worm style you'll just you'll buy a bottle of water with the snail in it so the, the analysis of this shows that it works in just five minutes in humans yeah so i guess they have better insulin than you um yeah now the problem though and the reason why um human insulin is important because we have used cow and pig insulin in the past is uh you know, those have the potential you can be allergic or you could have um, some sort of immune response to those things. Who's going to um, be allergic to a poisonous snail? Well, see, that's what I'm concerned with. <laughs> um, um, well, good, Michael. I wow. hope this will help you in the future. Um, yeah, thank you. So it looks like Tim Cook and I actually agree on something. 
he has more faith in augmented reality than in virtual reality. Although, I'm not sure less people will be interested in it, but I, I feel like augmented reality is more the future than full immersive virtual reality. Especially since with augmented reality, it can easily like turn to full virtual reality. Um, And if you didn't already look ridiculous enough doing stuff in virtual reality, Future Town has some modular platforms to turn uh, VR into simulated rides. Uh, the platform does look pretty cool, but you are not going to look very cool while you're using it. And it seems kind of dangerous to me, especially that one where you're standing up. Maybe the, the sitting down and riding ones would be all right, but... That standing up one seems like it might be dangerous. Although it looks like you have like super strong moon boots or something on there. I don't know. Uh, uh oh. Even more reasons for Nick not to use his uh, <clears throat> debit card or credit cards anywhere. All of us, honestly. Um, thieves have a new, more insidious way to swipe your pin. And it's called a periscope skimmer. Uh, Nick, maybe you can say if that's something that's already been discussed and out there, or if this is actually something new. Um, um, what? Um, no, I don't know. Right. It's a device attached to the internal mechanism of people pressing buttons and things. So there's no way to even tell if that ATM is at risk. Hmm. Um, device can store up to 32,000 numbers and will last 14 days on a charge. Hmm. Cool. Hmm. Interesting. So yeah, uh, be careful about using those cards and skimmers and things like that. Um, looks like uh, drone racing is making a big uh, segue into the UK market. They're going to have, uh, looks like Sky Sports is going to come to the UK, they say, next month, or it's coming soon. Um, that's cool, seeing it, it's building up and stuff there. Oh, and is anyone in or around Pittsburgh today? Because if you are, you can hail a self-driving Uber today. So if you ever wanted to try out a self-driving car uh uber has you covered and we'll take you just around town or wherever you need to go i guess that's pretty cool that's a it looks like a pretty major rollout i can see at least one two three four five six seven eight sixteen cars or so that's pretty cool um oh i was excited about this and michael you talked about the android app that you really like that tells you how fast you're going yeah yeah i i did i don't um does, I, it, give I, you, does it give you speed limit information um yeah so uh velociraptor will uh it appears as if and, and i've actually stopped using it because when i um uh it wasn't working uh quite well with the uh maps beta that they rolled out but um but at any rate, the uh, it looks like it's pulling that data because it puts a red when you get up to the speed limit or exceed what it believes the speed limit to be. It changes it to red yeah, and makes so it noise. Does. So yeah. yeah, like you could have just said yes, it does instead of sorry. <laughs> but, um, so anyway, where I was going with that is, it looks like Google Maps is now going to start doing that. Oh, thank. Uh, so I don't need anything. Yeah, good. Yeah, good. So they'll have a little icon there that'll tell you, and then also will tell you your speed and turn red if you're going over the speed. Um, just some users. There's no official announcement. It might just be a test from Google, just rolled out to a couple people. But um, lots of other apps they mentioned do have this already, so it would make sense that they catch up in this regard. Um, I thought this was a pretty cool article as well. They have a uh, a command line option to pause Windows updates. Uh, 
But looking at it now, it looks like it's just stopping the update services. So you could have done that the whole time. I didn't even read that. I should have read that before I post it because that's dumb. <laughs> so this is cool though. Some uh, Japanese inventor created a lethal water gun. So, gosh, that would have been nice to combat all the super soakers back in the day. I just want to note that that any 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 object, whether it be water or not, propelled at a high enough rate of speed will cause life-threatening damage to a human. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, come on, using that against a super soaker. <laughs> I haven't even looked at this, but but um, I, I'm just the, wondering what they plan. I mean, is this for crowd control? I mean, what does this use? Because usually I think it's about... just used because it's freaking cool. <laughs> maybe maybe he got tired of the neighborhood kids uh, super soaking him whenever he walked to his lab, and he was like, "I'm going to do something about this today." And now, if they do it, he like draws a clear line in the asphalt. Don't cross this line again. <laughs> Or else this could happen to you. Oh, wow. Yeah, that that guy. See him being blurred out? I, I can tell something's probably not right about him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and it is because Japan makes 90% of the weird stuff on Earth, especially game shows. And if you've never seen a Japanese game show, you need to look them up. That's uh, I, I, weird. I, there's uh they're as bad as uh, probably the worst uh the worst acid trip you could probably ever be on I'd imagine um they are crazy they've got uh, yeah I, well especially if everything's in Japanese and you don't understand Japanese well that's a good point possibly some of them, no no it's still the stuff they do is still crazy even if you fully understand Japanese I'm just saying that it's yeah, if you don't it makes it even that much weirder. So, um, bizarre. Um, it has been captured. I mean, they had a they had a skits on SNL and stuff like that about uh, uh you know about that type of thing. Um, Simpsons touched on it in a couple of episodes. I remember everyone's talked about it. Yeah. And, yeah. Yep. Joe Chamberlain's correct that only about forty percent of that ninety percent of weird stuff is worth uh, looking into, but. You will get a good laugh out of it if you look at the game shows, at least. Um, so it looks like uh, Shark Ransomware. Michael, have you come across this in your... No, but if it's brand new, <laughs> yes, it'll probably take me a day or two to get around well, to it. They, uh, it's actually something that appeared in July, and they've now rebranded themselves as Atom Ransomware. Hmm. And they even have an affiliate program... Uh, offering improved service for crooks that want to start a life in cybercrime. And so it looks like they're at one of the the customizable kits that you can purchase. And Yeah, this is ransomware as a service. Um, yeah, um, yeah, it went live in, in July um, of this year. So I haven't been around all that uh, long, but yes. I hate these things. It's just the more of these things out there, the more the more ransomware, the more ugh, it's just not good. Um so if anyone's interested in getting a Amazon Echo and doesn't want to pay two hundred dollars for an Amazon Echo, uh you can now pay fifty dollars for the Amazon dot and uh get pretty much all the same features. Uh obviously you won't have the nice the as nice speaker set in there, but according to them, that it does have a built-in speaker and it does have the uh, same microphone configuration, so it should pick up your your questions and things regularly. Um, the dot used to be ninety nine dollars, and uh, they sold out of them really quick. But I don't th like. I think you had to like buy an Echo or something else first, and then you could get the dot. So now it's anyone can buy it and play with it and do whatnot. So um, it's also compatible with all the stuff that the Echo is, so you can continue to use it um, as expected as the two hundred dollar ones. Uh, yeah, Phoenix, if you want to find a sample for that, uh, definitely do that. Um, 
If you want to use uh, the quick hash update that Michael released, you can even easily upload it to us. Um, I'm getting a link for that for you right now. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we would appreciate that. And um, just anybody out there listening, uh, if you do have access to um, malware or ransomware um, samples, we'd love to uh, hear it. Preferably, we'd like to focus on ransomware, but I, I don't. Would it? It wouldn't be bad for somebody just uh, uploaded generic malware to us, would it? No, no. Any malware is good to have, and ransomware is preferable. But you can use that uh, free quick hash tool that uh, Michael spent some time updating, and you can you have the option to upload that file to us that way, so we can check it out. And the one cool thing um, that uh, uh, I like about the tool is that, and I don't know, did you did you ever do that update for the multiple, the, that last little quick yes. fix? I'm not sure if you did. Okay, great, great, great. Uh, that being the case, that you can select um, when you do the open or, or uh, to, to open up a file or browse to a file, you'll be able to select an entire, you know, the entire contents of a folder. You can just select everything uh, that's in it, multiple selection. So, um, and it will open up each one of those into a, a separate tab. I found it to be uh, very quick to, uh, with with large um, samples uh, of, of, of malware and ransomware, very quick to get that information down and get uh, the hashes copied. Um, it was a lot quicker than doing them one by one by one, which was what we were previously doing with the older version of the tool, so. So very nice and, uh... Yeah, Phoenix, I, I know you gave us some of those samples for the other ones for me to test with and much appreciated. Um, if you want to use that and just upload all kinds of ransomware samples, please do. We would much appreciate it and we'll integrate that into our tools and things. Yeah, awesome. That could be a way too. too. Um, so it uh, looks like if you have a problem with cockroaches and you want to keep them away, apparently peppermint oil is one of the best things to use. I thought that was interesting. Um, oh, and super excited about this. How many of y'all have ever read A Wrinkle in Time? Um, I have. Um, let me fresh my memory on that book i believe i have it is a great book and i would highly recommend it to anyone but if you don't like books and feel like they're outdated uh media and should be banned and uh burnt then you can wait until disney comes out with the movie um looks like they've picked a lead role for it already and have a few other big names in it uh wreath with Reese Witherspoon, Mindy Kaleg, Oprah Winfrey, Oprah Winfrey, even. Um, oh wait, is that that they're going to be in the movie or wait? No, actually, Bradley, I, I haven't. I was thinking. I was actually thinking of a brief history of time by Stephen Hawking, but um, a completely different. Yeah, completely different. Um, so this was a 1963 uh, sci-fi um, covering uh, the lives of two families and. Uh, um, has a Tesseract uh, reference in it. Yeah, yeah, it's freaking awesome. It is a great book. Um, the the later ones, the sequels to it, weren't as interesting, I feel, but this one there was... There was like five, I think. Yeah, but this one was well-rounded. Everything was great about it, and Future Tech Eric, I'm guessing you raised your hand when I said who has watched that, because awesome, and hopefully you agree that it is a great book, so... Um, yeah, yeah, so yeah, I I did reference the Fahrenheit 451 there. I'm glad you took notice of that. I do kind of feel like they should all be burned, but um, but that's just because they, they'll start making better movies. If they stop focusing on books and start focusing on screenplays, we'll get better movies. We won't get this rehash stuff that we keep getting and dealing with. So, um, Yeah, it's been a while since I've read it too, Eric. I actually stopped reading books in high school because of many things but um yeah so there's that and definitely i highly recommend the book if you don't want to read like i said wait until disney comes out with the movie they do fairly good job at adapting books in their movies so i feel like it should be fairly well um 
don't want to spend too much time on this, but I feel like I have to kind of mention it because it's out there that Snowden tries to explain to Obama why uh, he should pardon him. Oh, yeah. And he did it with an interview with The Guardian. So, um, I don't know. I, I don't think this is going to change anyone's opinion on, on, on the matter much, although it um, – I mean, his argument is the same one. It's that there's what a greater good, uh, you know, the 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 positives of what he did outweigh the negatives, so to speak. But that's not really how our legal system works. Just because, you know, you let's say I went out and murdered a whole bunch of people. Yeah, not unless you up, overthrow uh, the government, then then it works that way. But. Well, yeah, but I mean, like I said, I mean, I'm still going to be charged with with the murders, even though I, you know send a billion dollars you know given building up houses for the homeless or something like that uh, you know it's it's okay. yeah you can't compare so but it is uh interesting that he could do that and that would just kind of like if someone if the part if the president pardons someone does that mean that like the next president can't do anything about it i'm pretty sure that like that's how that is that would it fall into the he, can't be tried yeah, twice kind of thing? Yeah, so, yeah so Nixon, I would think so. It would when fall Nixon under double jeopardy. Pardoned, when Nixon was pardoned, no further president could ever um, un undo that pardon, basically. Um, from what I, I, I thought that was the case. I um, don't have the legal precedent for that, but uh, I, I believe it is set in stone at, at that point. Um, and yeah, it's like a double jeopardy thing, I believe. Yeah, so that's the concept. I, of I would think that would be super awesome of Obama to do in his last day of office is to be like, "Oh, by the way, Snowden, pardon, deal with it." <laughs> That'd just be funny because like he wouldn't have to answer to anybody. He wouldn't. It wouldn't matter. It's his last day. He wouldn't even have to talk to the news about it. He would just do that as his last thing in office, and then yeah. the next day the new president gets inaugurated in he's done so well no but you have to understand that this doesn't just um you know like for instance if you were um, a democrat and um you know you um obama campaigns for hillary so you would think that hill anything bad that obama did would be kind of pushed onto hillary as as well so in other words uh, if if if, if well, you I would agree think it, with Obama, I was honestly thinking it would be even funnier if like Trump got elected and this is how Obama left office the final day. <laughs> Yay! Trump is coming into office and then has to deal with the media lashback about Snowden coming back to America after being pardoned. <laughs> that would just be awesome. Um, yeah, it, it, it is really weird that Snowden's in exile and Hillary's not only free, but running for president. So, yeah. Um, uh, there is a uh, feature to do that, uh, Phoenix. Basically, if you have a hash already, there's the button at the bottom that you can compare hash with whatever file you have selected. So it'll you can yeah so if you have a uh, tab selected you and you hit the compare button and paste in um, a hash that you let's say find somewhere or is published on a site so you want to confirm let's say that the file is legitimate that you're looking at um, you can paste it in there uh, that's not I I know that's a little bit trivial um, and I'm wondering if you have a different way of or an idea of how that should work. Um, I mean, I would think kind of too. Maybe it should go across all open tabs. Yeah, I I, I think it should do that. Um, but I'm having but, an issue doing that with my implementation, but I I can make that. But happen. but it's also like so if you have one if you have the hash of a file you know is good, then you can easily copy that just by clicking on the any of the hash type name that you want, and then you can oh he another file that you're not sure about and it will do it so. Yeah, yeah, he's and, he's just talking about opening up multiple ones for. Okay, so yeah, you can do that. So, and you can open up the same. Um, well, I don't know how you would want to do that. You can open up the same file twice. Yeah, I feel. Uh, and what's going on in the chat there, Joe Chamberlain and uh, uh, Ian? I I feel like if I've seen the stuff about her flu situation, I'm not sure about what's going on with it. I haven't really read much into it. But I feel like if they tried to replace her, that would just like hand so many people over to Trump at that time. And honestly, it's not like either one is better or worse. So 
it doesn't really matter what happens after November. We're all pretty much screwed one way or the other. So, um, in the meantime, though, uh, HBO has come out with a new trailer for their Westworld, and even a little bit better done this time. So I'm super excited about this coming out. Um, premieres October 9th, I believe. So three or four weeks now, you'll get to see uh, the HBO revision and updated with people like Anthony Hopkins and uh, other great actors um, in HBO's redone Westworld, which was a very good uh, 1970s movie that uh, Nick pointed out to me as well when I first brought this up on the show. And the sequel even was fairly good, uh, Future World. So highly recommend watching those if you're excited about that and anticipating it or either way you just want to watch a good movie that's a good one to watch um yes yes it is almost literally pick your poison um let's see what else we got here we're getting close to our time Oh, but I thought this was interesting. So we've heard, we've even mentioned about the fact that uh, uh, Samsung Note 7 batteries have been exploding, set a Jeep on fire, set a, a six-year-old kid on fire in New York, I think, set a house on fire here in South Carolina. Yeah, All kinds of things. And a lot of things. And now they're pushing it over. The, you're talking about the patch? Yeah, the over there, update to... Uh, Reduce your battery life, basically. <laughs> yeah, they, they essentially take your battery life and cap it at 60%. So, um, yeah, it's uh, turning your, what, 3,500 milliamp into the equivalent of a 2,200 or something like that? I don't know. I, don't know. I didn't do all the math on it, but I thought it was a interesting fix. And honestly, they're doing that just for the people that aren't taking their recall, which they recalled and said they want all the devices back they'll even give you a s7 edge or s7 to hold you over while they're doing the recall stuff and fixing your phone and sending it back so um yeah so, uh, they did something about it i feel that's pretty good <laughs> wow you're all about the room today <laughs> Um, so I thought this was pretty cool. A completely autonomous drone that can do fairly insane stunts. So I thought that was cool. Just thought it was cool. Um, oh, and did y'all hear about this? So uh, apparently Congress is trying to decide whether or not they're actually going to turn over, uh, domain registration stuff to uh, ICANN. <laughs> and of course, all the tech companies are like, please, Congress, please, for once in your life, do something correct. Don't do something just because you're doing it or want to cause arguments about partyism and whatever. So what's I'm um, sorry. What's what's your take on 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 this? You you want to let I can take it over, right? I don't see any reason why they shouldn't. I mean, I kind of feel the same way. Like we created the internet, and we should retain some control over it. But at this point, the internet is fairly much worldwide, and it's a nonprofit that's running it. Whereas here, it's a for-profit company that yeah. is okay. Uh, just glad we're in agreement on those details. Um, I wasn't sure if you were suggesting that uh, they, that the government, you know, oppose this in some way or, I mean, there's still apparently, um, this can be overturned, right? I mean, it's not uh, set in stone, right? Well, it, does, it doesn't, it, yeah, they, so right now it's scheduled for like October 1st. October, that's what I heard. Over, but Congress is deciding if they're going to vote to block it or not. Hmm. And it's just, man, Congress I guess it's partisan like, crap and getting on top of technology. Has Congress done anything like worthwhile in the past seven, eight years? I don't think they have. I don't know, but I would like to point out that they're the, probably uh, clueless about this issue. <laughs> and I think they've done more damage than they have done good. I think it's almost time that we just like 
cut them off. Like, maybe we just start over, start fresh. Nobody that's been in Congress up until this point can be in Congress this year, coming up voting seasons. Yeah. Just remember that everybody Fire that's in and get some Congress new people. has yeah. been elected. These it's it, these people don't just walk into an office and sit down and say, "Hey, I'm just doing this." I mean, there's an election process, and so people are voting for. I know, but their election process of things like you only have one candidate to pick from. Congratulations, this one won again. Um, and it's well, like that's if true, you try but then to, you could are you could run you against. Try them. to go in and run against them. They'll do like massive smear campaigns and yeah. limit uh, your ability. I'm to not saying it's easy. It's, it's ridiculous. It's not easy, so... but it's not impossible. Think of it. Like look look at it this way. A lot of a lot of actors and actresses They're have so gone into incumbent. office. Though. Have gone into office and they simply get it because of their notoriety on stage or screen. I I agree with Future Stecky and that. Congress should be on minimum wage. Um, yeah, I, 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 I kind of agree. I, I, I'm not thinking there's enough work there. They certainly don't do enough work for it to constitute a full-time job. Um, if they were actually sitting there for eight hours a day passing bills or reading bills or something like that, then I could understand maybe, but I really don't think that's how it works. Um, and most of the people who actually to vote for the laws, vote. most people, yeah, that's the thing. Most of the people who vote for the laws don't actually read the laws that they're playing. They have other people well, no. read for them and do some sort of interpretation. They don't they, even read them, nor do they even actually have to be there to vote. Like they can yeah. just, oh, I'm not voting today. Yeah, yeah, there was a vote. I missed it. Slept in. Yeah, <laughs> their 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 whole job is voting for bills, and and yet there's no accountability for them to actually participate in that um, job and of course they get paid an incredible amount of money uh, yeah they, to, they should be they should be required to vote on every single issue well yeah, and it's, at a minimum. it's actually uh, and they're public I, servants so serve us <laughs> last week tonight was uh talking about a, a issue that's fairly rampant even in the the national congress it's more in the state congresses but national congresses will do it as well where they'll actually like vote for other people so like those people aren't there yeah. and they'll even like fight amongst themselves of who gets to make the vote for that other person and it's like what and yeah so consider if yeah consider how that would work in any other situation <sighs> yeah so yeah, it's you know, what a pretty cushy part-time job. Oh, I'm just send my kid up. I'm gonna send a whole my 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 classroom up to, to or, or my kid up to vote for me and the rest of the family too. You know, <laughs> I mean, we. we what did you say? What did you say, Proctor? I said they have a pretty cushy part-time job. Yeah, for quite a quite an awesome uh, compensation package there. Yeah, for 147 thousand and benefits. It's yeah, that's. The best benefits you could ever have. The oh, benefits yeah. alone equate to a salary of thirty thousand dollars. I believe it's been estimated or more. Yeah, I would love to have a congressman's health care package. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So uh, that term limits would be great if they would institute them. I, I feel like at least that, but I really feel yeah, like who wants who wants to vote in their uh, vote in their uh, demise? I guess I don't. Know. Yeah, and that's the, that's the problem. <laughs> we gave them power to give themselves raises. No wonder they're at the one percent range of. Well, yeah. I uh, agree with everything stated about Congress and and Senate so far. Um, I would also like to add that a politician should not be a career. It should not exist as a career. Yeah. There should be no classes for politics. There should be no schooling for this. This um, original idea of uh, our elected representatives was to actually pluck a common man or woman from society and have that commoner come mm -hmm. in and do the job for a little while and then get out and make room for another commoner because people who do the dirty work actually know what's going on. So um, I really think that anyone who wants to be a career politician should automatically be barred. Yeah. That's just me. I completely agree too. That's so let's uh, we're we're at our hour limit, so let's wrap up for today. I do have one last link just to throw out there. A, it mentions that they're coming out with a new Predator film. B, they're going to have Benicio del Toro in it. So, oh, that could be good. That, leave that how you will, and uh, otherwise. I'd say let's just go ahead and cut it and say thanks everyone for watching. We'll be back tomorrow at 
2 p.m. Hope you've had a great first half of your week and have a continued great second half of your 4 week. 4 p.m. tomorrow. 4 p.m. Thank you, Tank. <laughs> I've been day off or two forward. I think we all have. It's cool. All right. Take us on out, Proctor. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Talk to you later.